Building your own game projects in Unreal Engine Fortnite is a ton of fun. In this video, Guillermo is going to show you how to implement visual effects or particle systems from Niagara into your project. So things like shields, explosions, all kinds of fancy things that are going to dress up your game and make it a lot more fun. Now, to do this, you're going to have to know how to make a particle system already or have access to another project that does this. We have a lot of tutorials to show you how to do that, both here on our YouTube channel, as well as over in our training at vfxapprentice.com. So go check that out. If you don't know how to make a particle system yet, this video definitely assumes that you already know how to do that. But once you've got that going, we're gonna show you how to bring those particle systems into your game project and start playing right away. Hey. In this video, we are going to explore how to import our Unreal Engine effects into UEFN so that we can check them out inside Fortnite. This is a great tool that we can use to try out our effects and see how they look with some context and drawing some inspiration from it, maybe making some Fortnite style environmental effects or even some interactive stuff, who knows? So let's dive right into it. First things first. If you haven't already downloaded UEFN, head over to the Epic Store and get it installed. Once that's done, we can launch UEFN and you'll be greeted with a screen like this, where you can select the map for your project or even load some of the featured examples. Go ahead and pick one of these and remember the location where your project is being created, since we'll need that later. You can also change it to whichever you prefer. After creating and opening your UEFN project, you might look at this and feel like it's exactly the same as Unreal, but you will quickly start to notice things like this time of day slider, these buttons. Although Fortnite is built in Unreal, there are some differences between the UEFN editor and the regular Unreal one, some of which I'll have the opportunity to comment on in just a second. But for that, we first need to bring our BFX assets from our Unreal project. So once we have our UFN project set up and ready to go, we can open our source project in Unreal. There we navigate to the assets we want to export. We select them, right click and choose Asset Actions Migrate, just like any regular Unreal migration. In this pop-up, we can see all the other assets that are being referenced by whatever we want to port, and so they are also going to be migrated to our target project. Once we press OK, like with any regular Unreal migration, we just have to navigate to our target project folder, in this case our UEFN project, and get into the content folder. You might notice that in this case there is no content folder right away, but we just have to keep going inside plugins and the rest of the folders until we find it. Once there, accept, and in a moment you should have your assets inside UEFN. We can look them up, drag them into our level, and after some loading, there is our shield. And something that you might notice about this effect is that it looks a little different from the version I have in Unreal. That isn't really any problem with the migration process, but rather differences in the lighting and post-processing between this island and the project this effect is coming from. You can also see how there is some level of auto-exposure in this map, and so the effect looks way different depending on the environment. So that's something that I will have to account for at some point, making some changes to my colors, if I want this effect to work well in this environment. And obviously, apart from that, depending on the general style and lighting of your effects, some are going to fit this environment better than others. Okay, so now I have my effect out in the level, which means that if I go up here and press launch session, I'm going to see them in game, right? That's right. As you can see, I'm getting some errors here when I try to do that. And part of it is thanks to a step that Unreal doesn't have, but UEFN introduces, and that's content validation. This is a check that happens when you try to launch a session and that all assets in UEFN have to pass in order to be used in Fortnite. The reason for this is twofold. The first reason is easy to understand, since these are projects that can be accessed by Fortnite players. This process provides a necessary layer of security. But also, for the map creators, it serves as a declaration from Epic that if your project passes these validation tests, it's not going to have compatibility issues in the future, as new versions of Fortnite are released. 
So let's read the output log and see what's failing the content validation. The first thing we have is a warning saying there is a non-cinematic texture that's too big. It also says we can use the load bias option to make it smaller. This isn't an error, it's just a warning, so the project could probably run anyway. But it's a good idea to fix it, so let's go ahead and do that. We go into our texture options and change the load bias until our texture size up here is more reasonable. Then the second line is just talking about the previous warning, but here we have an actual error, PS shield, that's our Niagara asset, missing an effect type asset. Okay, so let's look into that. Let's go into our particle system. And in the options here, we can already see the same error. Apparently we need to set an effect type. We can just click this fix issue button to solve the problem. We could also just have selected the default effect type in this dropdown ourselves, but the one time there is an actual button to solve the problem, of course I'm going to press that. And with those changes, these errors should be solved. But if I try to launch session again, it will still fail. And that's because over here, under UEFN validation, there are still some issues that need our attention. And do not worry if you didn't catch them. If you try to launch session, you would again get an error notification down here that would call your attention to them. And the only reason I know is because that's exactly what happened to me before. So what I'm getting here is a series of errors saying that the project can't contain any of these assets. And if we check them out, we can see that these are the color curves that I'm using in the materials in my effect to apply a gradient mapping to my textures. It just so happens that color curve assets are not supported in UEFN. The migration tool is not aware of these incompatibilities between regular and real projects and UEFN, so it moved them here anyway. But if we want our project to run, we will have to remove them all. These limitations might change in the future, or they might not, but for the time being, we will have to find an alternative to our use of these color curves. In my case, I went back to my Unreal project and exported the atlas that contains all these color curves as a texture. And after some cropping in Photoshop to make it easier to handle, I imported this texture back into the UEFN project and I had to make some changes to my materials so they sample a texture instead of a curve. It's possible that you might find other problems that this specific asset didn't trigger and if that's the case, you'll have to follow any instructions in the error log, like we just did. This effect has a lot of different stuff, so it's also possible that your effect has no curves or any other incompatible asset types, and you can just migrate your stuff and play right away. But I wanted to share these examples uh, from this effect, since these validations and incompatibilities are really the only part of the whole process that can get a little tricky. Now, after all these changes, our validation checks should be working and we should be able to launch our session. And one last tip before doing that, since we are not making any custom game mode with gameplay that we want to test, we can click on these three dots next to the launch session button and deselect auto start game. That means instead of starting the game right away, we are going to enter the map in edit mode and if we have this live edit checked, we are even going to see live in our Fortnite session any changes made in the UEFN editor. So with that, let's press our launch session button. And after some loading screens. And a couple more. We are going to be playing in our map. As you can see, I'm playing with my character here. And we can check out our effects in game. We are in edit mode, so we can fly around by pressing space twice. And so we can take a good look of our effect from every angle. And also, since we have our live edit on, we can do some changes in the UEFN editor and see the results right away. In this case, I'm going to add a collision to my shield. So I'm going to create a sphere. I'm going to move it around, resize it and I'm going to make it invisible. And this is the Fortnite editor after all, so let's browse some Fortnite assets. Let's drop uh, some environment assets over here. And also a vehicle spawner. 
And I feel like sometimes this works better than others. I've made some changes that didn't really update right away. And I have to click this push changes button. So keep that in mind if that happens to you. But here they are. They were updated right away. And we can interact with them in all the cool ways. Sometimes I even forget about the effect and just start playing around. But that's all for this video. I hope it was useful and see you around. All right, thank you so much for watching this video on how to implement effects inside of Unreal Engine Fortnite. For more information on how to learn to animate the cool shield that you saw Guillermo using, you can go over to our website at vfxapprentice.com and learn how to make that shield from scratch. So there's a lot of other cool knowledge there too, even if you're a total beginner and have never made a particle system before in your life. We have all that information covered in our free training all the way through the paid content as well. There's a lot of cool stuff for you to look at. All right, well, that's it for now and we'll catch you in the next video.